بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والنجم إذا هوى ما ضل صاحبكم وما روى بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا وحبيبنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد As we were talking about recognizing the greatness of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam And we talked about the hadith of the Shafa'ah that proves that in the hereafter everyone will recognize and all human beings will see the greatness of Rasulullah But at the same time, even in this world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala established the greatness of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in such a way that no one can deny it. When we see those who are pointing fingers at Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they are pointing fingers at Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam based on some objections that they may have in their mind based on their society, their culture, their environment and unfortunately many times the law of their country that is established 1400 years after the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But when we look at his greatness, it's something that no one can deny. And as I mentioned yesterday, it's not one or two incidents, it's not one or two things that we can look at, it's everything about him. But of course, we don't have time to cover everything from birth not only until he passed away, until after he passed away and his teachings that continued and kept on changing people's life and continue to change people's life towards betterment up to this day. It's a fact that I have witnessed myself and many of you can do it if we go out and reach out to those People could be from any family of any background. If there are two brothers, two sisters in a family, one of them accepts Islam. And this is, I'm telling you, is a practical example that I have witnessed myself and there are so many examples that I know myself and in today's time. Two brothers or two sisters in a family. One of them accepts Islam. And initially at the beginning stages of this person accepting Islam upsets everyone in the family. After some time when they see the changes in his life, changes in his attitude, in his behavior, the way he started dealing with them, they wish for all of their children to be Muslim. Even if they are not ready to accept it themselves. But they would like their children to become Muslims because of the change they have seen in that one person that have accepted to follow the teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he conquered Makkah Mukarraqah And he made that announcement. He told the Sahaba, we don't want to fight. Don't fight anyone. 
unless they attack you. We want to enter it peacefully. And as they were entering Mecca, the kuffar of Quraysh realized that there is nothing we can do. So their leaders, elders, and the general public gave up and they surrendered. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made this announcement. Whoever will enter in his, in his house is safe. No one is going to harm him in any way. And then he specifically mentioned the name of some of the leaders. Man dakhala dara Abi Sufyan fahuwa amin. Whoever will enter into Abu Sufyan's house, he's safe. Think about this. Who's Abu Sufyan at this moment? He is the one who is leading all the forces against Islam. He is the leader of Quraysh after Abu Jahl. Can you think about a person who's sitting on the seat of Abu Jahl, who can take the place of Abu Jahl? You would say, no one can talk to this man right now. Until I talk to him, I deal with him. And he's saying, all of you can go into his house. Whoever will go to Abu Sufyan's house is safe. Who would take that chance? Who would accept to make that announcement? We will say, look, keep an eye on the main leaders. The big shots. We have to have someone standing by their door, a guard standing at their door that they can't talk to no one. We will tap them, we will do everything to monitor them. And Rasulullah is saying that if you are, if anyone would go to his house, you are safe. Whoever will put his weapons and seen walking without any weapons is safe. So who are they going to attack now? No one really. Except for someone who is determined to put himself in that situation and just looking to rage a war. And there was a group of those also. You know when people talk about peace and they talk about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and how he according to their understanding did or said things that is according to their understanding of peace but not really according to their actions because if you compare their actions with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's actions their statement with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's statement, everyone can see who is bringing the peace and who is raging the war. Who is attacking others, who is respecting others. It's very simple and clear if someone wants to sit and look at it black and white. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is stopping everyone, all the sahaba from attacking anyone. And the only people that you will be allowed to fight is those who would attack you. And at that time, some of their, you can say, those who were generals in their army, like Akrima bin Abi Jahal. Who is Akrima bin Abu Jahal? The son of Abu Jahal. He is the person that Abu Jahl considered him to be his main supporter to oppose Islam. So until the battle of Badr, he was a big supporter of his dad. After the battle of Badr, when his dad was killed, his animosity increased even more. Why? Now he had seen his own father laying down in the battlefield killed on the hand of Muslims 
So he wants to take Lou Angels. So he gathered his army and tried to attack some of the Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een. Khalid ibn al-Walid radiallahu anhu was on that side. And he took good care of those people. Some of them were killed and the remaining ran away. Out of the ones that ran away was Ikrimah bin Abi Jahl. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, this person is not willing to give up, is not willing to stop. We are, imagine, imagine this announcement of bringing the peace to the country that just go into your home, that's it. Go into your home, we will not search you. We will not come to you. We will not hurt you. We will not attack you. Just go into your house. If you need anything, you need to walk out of your home, leave your weapons in the house, come out. We will not, no one is going to talk to you. What could be more peaceful way of establishing the peace in a country where there was war all the time? Where they, everyone is walking with weapons. Today is the only day people are seen walking without the weapons. So when he attacked and he went to that extreme, Prophet ﷺ said, whoever finds Akrima, he is one of those people that were not forgiven. And he made, initially he made the general announcement that now all people are forgiven, except for few people. One of them was Akrima, that if he's found anywhere, he will not be forgiven. Just think about that announcement of forgiveness also. When he is, he gathered all the Quraysh now by the Kaaba. And he says, O oh people of Quraysh, ma tarawna anni fa'ilun bikum. What do you think I'm going to do to you? He's asking who? He's asking his worst enemies. Those who have been leading wars against him for last eight years. Can you imagine? He's asking them that what do you think I'm going to do now? Who is sitting there in the audience that he's talking to? He see those who stepped on his back when he was performing salah. When he was in sujood. There are people who stepped on his back. He sees them sitting right there. He sees those who came with some rope and sheets and they put it in his neck and tangled it so hard that he fainted. He sees those who someday they were punching him on his face. They were spitting on his face. He sees those who assassinated some of his Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een and he sees the blood in their hand, that these are the people who killed that Sahabi, that Sahabi, that Sahabi of mine. Not only this, he even sees those who attacked his own daughter and killed him, killed her. Who attacked the family members and they killed them. All kind of people saying that. And only one word. When he asked them, "Ma tarawna anni fa'ilun bikum," what do you think I'm going to do to you? They said, "Akhun kareemun wa abnu akhin kareem," very, very generous and polite brother. And older people are saying, "Very generous and polite nephew of ours." Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam's word after that was. Go, I'm setting everyone free. Who have the guts to say this? Today when we say Allahumma khulli walil mu'minina wal mu'minat wal muslimina wal muslimat Ya Allah, accept that person, don't forgive him. That person, the way he treated me, Ya Allah, don't forgive him. That I want to see him in Jahannam, but everyone else, Ya Allah. We have some of those people in the corner of our hearts. 
that after mu'minina wal mu'minat wal muslimina wal muslimat is scares us if that person is going to be included too. And here, idhabu fa antum What a greatness. Greatness is seen by person's action, not only word of mouth. This is the action. So many Sahaba are standing there hoping to get some permission to do something. I see people over here that killed my father, attacked my mother. Just think about Ammar ibn Yasir, what he must be thinking about at that time. I see people who used to torture my father and my mother, who killed my brother. It's a long for that person. No, no. So many others. Everyone is standing there and they're looking at those people. And all of those that are sitting in front of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they are so confident about forgiveness that they came to sit there, to listen to him. Although they know that all of those sahaba are going to be around him, who were hurt by them, who lost their loved ones because of them, but they know Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his love for people, his care for others, he is not going to allow anyone to hurt us. I can go and sit with him. Subhanallah. This by itself, this by itself is something, as much as you think about it, you don't want to stop talking about it. Who in the world would do it? And now, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he sat down, some women came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One of the women says, she accepted Islam, she came with other women from Quraysh, she accepted Islam, they did bay'ah on the hand of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and on the hand, doesn't mean shaking the hand, it's the expression that we use, we mean the bay'ah with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then this woman speaks up and says, Ya Rasulullah, I'm Umm Hakim. Who is Umm Hakim? Who is Umm Hakim? The wife of Ikrimah. Ya Rasulullah, now he is scared and he fled the country. Please. Amminhu ammanak Allah. Ya Rasulullah, give him the protection. May Allah protect you. He said, Fahuwa amin. Huwa amin. Yes, he's protected. He's safe. If he comes, we will not hurt him. She went out looking for him. At that time, he was just coming off a boat. He went, he was going towards Yemen. And it's good he didn't go to Yemen. A few years later, even Yemen was conquered. But anyway, he was trying to make his way to Yemen. As soon as the boat started moving, there was a windstorm. And you know, in that situation, the boat will be jumping up and down with heavy waves. So the person driving the boat says to him, that this is the only way we can be saved is that you pray to God with ikhlas, with ikhlas, sincerity. So he asked him, what is ikhlas? He said, ikhlas is, you say, la ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. He said, I'm running away from that. He said, then get out of my boat. We both are going to be drowned. So he's coming out and his wife get, gets overboard. And she calls him. Come, I have talked to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What? You talked to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Why did you go to him? He came out to find out what's the story. She says, I went to him and I talked to him and he is giving you security and protection. No one is going to hurt you. No way. For me, he knows himself. He knows a person like me can never be forgiven. And he thinks that because she accepted Islam, 
now she is going to play a game or something. Just to take him back. No, I heard he said that I'm, I can never be forgiven. But I talked to him myself. Are you serious? Yes, I talked to him. I talked to Prophet Sallallahu myself. And I came to you from the best of the people you can ever meet. Of course, he's convinced. So he went back with his wife. And they both went to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He stood by the door of the Haram. And he calls from there. He still wants to make sure. He's a, he's a soldier that's considered to be equivalent to thousand warriors. This is Akrima. Equivalent to 1,000 warriors. Allah gave him that strength. So, he stands by the door. He says, Ya Muhammad, before I walk in here and come to you, I don't want to be misled by anything. Um Hakim is right over here, my wife. She is telling me that you said that I am under protection. Are you, is, it, is it true? Prophet says, come in, come in, don't worry, come in. Marhaban bil rakibil muhajir. I welcome the person, the, uh, the horse rider that is muhajir, that, have, that is immigrating. He was leaving and now he came back. Prophet is appreciating his coming back. That you did hijrah now. You came back and I'm welcoming you. Come back, my brother. Come. He can't believe himself. He went to Prophet He said, how much protection or how long can I be protected? He said, you tell me how long you want. After a little discussion, he said, what do you invite people to? He said, I invite people to la ilaha illallah, to believe in one Allah, to believe in me as Rasulullah. And iqamat as salah, ita as zakah, salm Ramadan. These are the things that I invite people to. Right away, he holds Prophet sallallahu hands and he says, "Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad an abduhu wa rasuluhu." Who is this? This is the son of Abu Jahal, a person that we would never ever think that he, there is any possibility for this person to take the shahada and to accept Islam. People with much lesser crime than that, we will try to kick them out. Then no. You can, you can never be Muslim. Even if you become Muslim, you will not be a good Muslim. Go, go. He becomes the Sahabi of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What does that mean? If all of us, and not just us, from the time of Tabi'een, Hassan al-Busri, and uh, Umar bin Abdul Aziz, and you name all the greatest of the Tabi'een, until the end of the days, take all the Muslims, put them together, they will not be equivalent to Ikrimah bin Abi Jahl. The status he obtained by becoming Muslim and being with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Look at the level, look at the status here. Look at the greatness here. And after that, he says to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, I did everything I possibly could to hurt you and hurt Islam. And I promise you from now on, I will not spare anything but to use it for the sake of supporting this deen of Allah. And it's a long history, but let's move quickly to the Battle of Yarmouk. During the Battle of Yarmouk, it was one of the toughest battles Sahaba Ridwanullahi faced during their time. One of the toughest ones. Akrim ibn Abi Jahl at that time, he was just next to Khalid ibn Walid. These, some of the big ones, they were standing together and they were moving forward. Khalid ibn Walid, he has Akrimah with him. He has uh, Dirar ibn al-Azwar with him. They're moving forward. And they feel that we are not able to move. We are not able to move forward. We are just in that position. We need to do something. Akrimah right away, 
he calls. He says, whoever is ready to meet me in Jannah, let's be together. And we are going to move forward regardless of what we have to face. Khalid bin Walid. And then he breaks the cover of his sword. Khalid bin Walid says, Akrama, please, we need you. He says, Khalid, you don't realize you became Muslim before me. I missed those days with Rasulullah. I need to make up for those days. Imagine the love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Khalid, you became Muslim before me. You got more time with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I didn't get that time with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I opposed him during those days that were that when you were with him, I need to make up for that. And a good group of people joined him. And most of those who joined him were those who accepted Islam at that time at Fath Makkah, when Makkah was conquered. And they want to make up for their mistake. And they move forward. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them the victory. But after they really gave everything they could, their bodies were full of wounds. And we read the story of three Sahaba, which three Sahaba who were wounded in the battlefield and when the water was brought to them, all three preferred that water to be given to the next person and they refused to take the water before the other person would have the water. Who were those three Sahaba? You know one name now. Who were those three Sahaba? You will be surprised. You will be surprised when we don't talk about that level of morality. You know who were those Sahaba? One was Akrimah bin Abi Jahl. The other was his uncle Al Haris ibn uh, Hisham. His uncle, the brother of Abu Jahl, who was the third person. Ayyash ibn Abi Rabi'ah, again another brother of Abu Jahl from his mother's side. Two brothers of Abu Jahl and one of them is the son of Abu Jahl. We read the story many times, we don't read the names, we don't know the names. These are the three people when the water was presented to al Haris, He said, no, give it to Akrimah who was next to him. This is more important to save the life of Akrimah than me. And as they took the water to Akrimah, Ayyash ibn Abi Rabi'ah is laying down next to him. He is looking. He said, no, go and give it to Ayyash. When he went to Ayyash ibn Abi Rabi'ah, he had passed away. Came back to Akrimah, he had passed away. And came back to Al-Haris, and he had passed away. Look at the great people with that great morality and that greatness that they learn they learn from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where they are giving up their lives but giving the water that they think may save me but would prefer their brothers to have the water before them. This is the greatness of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where we see the example of it, a shadow of it in the life of Sahaba Ridwanullah alayhi wa sallam. صلى الله تعالى على خير خلقه سيدنا وحبيبنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين